Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to quickly teach you how to open websites using Python. And surprisingly for many this is incredibly simple. You don't need any third party libraries, you can just do it with a module from the standard library. Here I have a clean file, I'm using Sublime Text but just use whatever you want. The module we'll be using is called Web Browser. So let me just import Web Browser. And you can give it an alias, say WB. So this is in the standard library, so you don't need to install any new packages. So we can actually start opening web pages with Python with a simple line. We just do web browser module and then we use the method open. And here we can specify any URL to a website. So let's say that we specify, say, Wikipedia. Like this, save my file and run it. And here you can see that Wikipedia opened in my default browser, which in my case is Google Chrome. Let me just put the browser side by side here. So of course you can open more than one, so you just do another one. So let's say, let me just copy this so I don't have to write it all out again. Let's instead of Wikipedia, just do Google, save this, run it. Now you can see I get two more tabs here from Wikipedia, of course again since I'm running the program again, and from Google. You could specify which browser you should use to open the pages. And you can also specify if you want to open them as tabs or as completely new windows. I don't want to go into this because you can really just easily Google it. What I want to do is to show you why it's useful to open web pages in Python instead of just clicking on your browser and searching. The reason is simple. Once we're inside Python, we have all of our Python logic that we can use. So let me just give you a brief example. Let me first just erase these two here. Then just work with one tab here and let me go to xkcd.com. I think many of you have seen the page before. XKCD is a webcomic describing themselves as a webcomic of romance, sarcasm, math and language. And they have this kind of quirky humor in a webcomic. So first it's a good idea to just explore the page. So here's the kind of home page and then if I say go to a previous one, I can now see on the URL that I get this number and this represents the comic. So if I go one back, this decreases. Sounds pretty nice. Let me just try to grab this thing here and open it by default. So again, exactly the same, go to the web browser, use the open method and uh, just paste this in here, save it and run it. And if I now run it, I'll get the same. Sounds great. But let's now manually do three of them. So let me just copy this. And let me just change these out, something like this. So if I now run it, I get three more. And it's pretty neat, but this application has a big drawback. I mean, now I open the same comics every time, I'll probably get really tired of reading them, so I should probably have some randomness. You can actually see that the page itself has this random component implemented, but let's just do it in Python. So I need some random numbers. So let's go to the random module and get the randint function. So let's say that I want three random numbers. Let's just make them using a list comprehension. So let's do randint. Let's say from zero to to 400 maybe. For each number in, let's just say range three, because then I get zero, one, two. Of course, the thing I have here don't depend on it. I just wanted to repeat three times. Here I have three random numbers. So let's now just go down and say for each number in range of three, then I'll do wb dot open. Now I essentially just need to paste this thing in here like this, except that I want this number to change. So it's probably a good idea to have the base URL separated. I'll just pick up everything before the number, like this. And what I need here then is an F string, where first of all, I'll just have this base URL. And instead of hard coding in the number, I'll just pick the three numbers from here. So that means I'll go open a new bracket here and do rand nums, and I'll pick the corresponding number to where I'm looping over. Then I could erase this, but also for links I don't really need the last. I can just do it like this. And before I run it, let me just comment out this. And now, once I'm running the program, I'll actually get three random web comics from XKCD. This is a pretty simple application and it's not really something impressive. You can easily argue that, hey, I have this random component here, I can just press that three times. But not all web comics or pages has this in general. And secondly, this will give me random over all the entries in the web comics. But actually, if you go back to the beginnings, they're not really in the spirit of XKCD as it has become in the last 10 years. Once or twice, if you go to random, we'll get to like the first 100 and they don't really have the same flavor. And say you don't really like this. It's, it's kind of a nice drawing, but it's not really the same fun core 
quirky humor of XKCD. There's no way in the interface here for me to say, I want random comics, but not the first 100. But with the code, I mean, yeah, I'll take random numbers from 100. Or even if I really like it after, say, a thousand, that's my favorite part, then let's do it from 1000. You can see here now that all the three that opened here are between 1000 and 2400. You really get a higher level of customization. These buttons here are kind of customized for typical users, but once you're dealing with web pages inside Python, you have all the power. Let me now just delete this. I think I'll agree that the application is not really impressive, but on the other hand, it's just nine lines of code, and then you get more customization than you have on the default web page. If you like this type of content, then I encourage you to subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.